Brook Pottery is the most collectible collectives of collectible ceramic collectibles. Every year, hundreds of people flock from around the globe to celebrate this year's 500th anniversary of this celebrated craft and arts design-based collective. This person travelled by car. And like many things that are born, it all started here in its birthplace, in Stockton Brook. Started in 1645 by Elizabeth Clayton, this craft quickly snowballed into the collective we know today, beginning at first with 50 or so crafts women and men from around the surrounding area, including well-known places such as Compton Bradley, Bromley on Bromley, Stickton, Witchley Common, Philcott Cumley, and Picknose on the World, which are near the more well-known cathedral towns of Bitcham, Fatborough, Smelly, Lazy. So here I am in the Stompton Brook Community Hall Museum, the first of its kind in England, with Leslie Brook, the world's leading expert in Stoke-on-Brook pottery. So, Leslie, I can see we're surrounded by some truly exquisite pieces. Uh, I'm no expert, but I was wondering if you could take us through a potted history of some of your favourite pieces today. Yes, thank you, Peter, for that lovely introduction. And what the future holds for pottery. Um, yes, so thank you, Peter. So, as we mentioned earlier, this collection was um, put together in 1645, which is very interesting and correct. However, what people don't know is that it was actually started by accident. Oh, really? What happened? So, at the moment, Peter, what are we sitting on? Chairs. Clay. So, Stockton Brook is on a clay-based landscape. Um, back in the day there would be no roads, tarmac, concrete. So Elizabeth Clayton was one day going on a walk and um, she tripped and she fell. Mm. And when she righted herself, she realised that she had left an imprint in the clay with her chest. We know this much from a letter that she wrote to her bosom friend Kitty Pitsley, mm. um, where she said that this was a very inspiring moment for her. Um, and we can see this in an illustration in the letter. Just here. Mm, so, mm -hmm. and then there's that. Mm. Uh, the next day she returned to the spot and uh, realised that leaves had gathered in the dried clay. Mm. And this gave her the inspiration to start her own clay workshop. Like Marie Antoinette's cups. But they, no. Because they were glass. Mm. Um, so, Peter, would you like to see some pieces from our collection of pieces, Peter? Yes, please. This is a later version of the very first model, mm. um, which is really nice. Mm. You would remove the lid um, mm. from the pot very mm. carefully, um, pour the tea mm. into the pot, um, just into this mm. bit, mm. and then pour the tea mm. from the pot into mm. the lid, like so, mm. very carefully, and drink mm. from this mm. section, and uh, return the lid to the pot. Mm. Um, there was a very strong fashion for this kind of drinking in the 17th century. And this type of tea drinking was heavily influenced by the Chinese. A much later version of the same model, mm. very much with the original story of Elizabeth tripping at the heart of its design. Mm. It almost looks like a cupcake. Mm, cupcakes were invented in 1796, and this was made a little earlier than that in uh, 1795. Oh, that's interesting. Um, what about this cheeky chappy? Uh, we'll come to that. 
piece in a moment. Mm. Now you see with this piece, which represents a large portion of the stock and book pottery, uh, they start to mm. play around with functionality. Mm. The design here is not just aesthetic. Although it is beautiful, isn't it? May mm. I? Yeah. Hmm. So this would have been a vase for flowers? No, well, actually it's um, it's, a, it's actually a pipe. Oh. So you would insert your mouth through here mm. and the tobacco would be funneled in the other oh. end. And then you'd set it on fire? Yes. And so what have we here? So I've got a little experiment for you, just a little bit of fun. Mm-hmm. One of these beautiful pieces is a fake. Ah, and the other's real? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the real stock and brook pottery would fetch close to um, 50 million pounds, mm. and the fake you'd be lucky to get 10 pounds mm. for. Right. Um, so I wonder if you can tell which is which. Ah, well, thank you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's find out. Uh, well, obviously, they're both beautiful. Ah, oh, well, this one truly is a marvel, from the colour to the finish on its glaze to the sound it makes. Um, I would say it's the genuine Stockenbrook piece, and as to a date, I would hazard a guess at uh, 1795. Um, so it's actually this one. Um, which you can tell because the uh, pigments are far superior and um, it's taller. Right. Well, thank you so much, Leslie, for such an illuminating insight into the world of stock for cook pottery. And I wonder what the future holds for pottery. However, it's been a real education and a true privilege, so from all of us here at the Community Centre Museum at Stockford Book, happy hunting and goodbye.